So the theme of giving thanks runs throughout scripture. If you Google, there's ways you can Google how many times the word appears in the Bible and the word thanks appears hundreds of times. And some of that tradition, it, it's, it already begins in the First Testament in the Hebrew Bible. And uh, always, people are always giving thanks. And it's part of, continued to be part of Jewish tradition today, that you give thanks in all circumstances. So even in hardship. Um, I remember once a Jewish friend of mine, her father died, and I was invited to the burial. And we were at the cemetery, and the rabbi said, it is a blessing to bury the dead. Because... In their understanding, it's a blessing to be able to gather with the family who is mourning and to lay the person to rest. So in all things, even in hardship, you begin by saying thanks to God. And you see that in many of the Psalms, a thanksgiving and a thanks and praising God and then lamenting about the hardship. And so begin with saying thanks. And some of you may have learned an acronym in, uh, consolation, uh, in confirmation for saying prayers. It was ACTS. And it stood for adoration, consolation, thanks, and supplication. So first you adore, you praise God, and then you console, and then you give thanks, those who are struggling, and then you give thanks, and then you bring your concerns. And in a more recent time, I remember hearing a speaker talk about, thank you, sorry, please. So you begin every prayer with thank you. Just thank you for this time that I could be in prayer. Thank you for the day and all that it offers. Thank you for being there that I can bring my prayers to you. Then sorry, uh, our regret or, or apology for where we have erred, where we have not stayed on the path. And then finally, please, as in finally bringing up the concerns that we might have. So it's easy to sit down in prayer and give God our laundry list. But this little thank you, sorry, please reminds us to stop, breathe, give thanks, and then pour it all out. And it is quite common, as uh, it said in our introduction for the... Um, from the Sundays and Seasons, it talks about how commonly a day of Thanksgiving is a time to give thanks for the harvest and a time to give thanks for what we might have and to gather with family and friends. And again, there are some limitations, but it's actually quite interesting how creative people can be. And so I've perhaps you've done this as well, and I've been a guest at other people's Thanksgivings and see that they do this as well, where we take a moment to kind of go around the table and Give thanks for something in particular we might be thankful for. And in some cases, it might be getting through the whole, the previous year. Maybe there has been hardship. Maybe there has been illness. I'm sure in the rural communities, they give thanks for the harvest. My understanding, it's been a difficult harvest in Western Canada this year, either drought or flood. And so sometimes I'm sure it is hard to give thanks. But we are called to try to be the ones to see the silver lining in the clouds and to find something to be thankful for. And we are so blessed. At the same time, we don't want to guilt trip, guilt trip people about that. Like sometimes I've heard Thanksgiving messages that almost thunder out, you have so much, and there are so many who have so little, and you should be thankful. Well, I don't think Thanksgiving is meant to be about that. I think Thanksgiving is meant to just pause and give thanks, because we know by different circumstances, different accidents of nature or whatever, we could all be in very different places. And so we are called as people of faith to see all that life gives us as gift and to find gift in that and then to find ways of sharing that gift with others. Look around your home, look around your life. Where and how can you take those gifts and pay them forward? Where and how can we learn and move beyond. And you might have remembered in the, the last number of weeks, the message that I've been gleaning from the scriptures is so often we get all this grace and this, this consolation from Jesus. And then under that is the message, go and do likewise. Take the forgiveness I give you. Take the healing I give you. Take whatever you have and go and give it to others. As a few weeks ago, I mentioned that, that concept that has become popular in some circles about me and Jesus and this unique relationship, and it's almost like this buddy-buddy, and I'm not saying that it can't be that for some people, but it cannot stop there. What is that relationship for? It is to give. And often in a marriage service, a sermon, I might bring that into the couple. So much energy is put into the wedding day and putting everything together for the perfect day and the perfect ceremony. And all of that, which is very rich and full, 
And then the call upon us is to be what's called a sacrament to the world. So how is your new relationship, your new union, your new coming together, it strengthens you, it helps you build a family, it brings you love and joy and perhaps sometimes struggle and challenge. But then how do you take all of that and gift it back to your community? And not only your immediate circle and your closest friends, but to the wider world. And I actually had two examples of that this previous week. I happened to read, um, as you know, we had the, the Day of Truth and Reconciliation for Indigenous Peoples, and there were a lot of themes all week about that. And then there was a gentleman that was featured in the news who just felt very strongly he wanted to do his, give his contribution. And so he found an organization that supports consistent work towards truth and reconciliation, a, a charity. And so he decided he would commit one day salary to, as, a, as a donation to that, to that organization. He said, one day of my time is worth one day of theirs. And that is just a simple way that he has done that, and he's challenged a lot of his coworkers, and, um, and this has sort of taken off. So it's that idea of, what do I have that I can give? So when there are problems in the world, we're not called necessarily to run over and jump in and try to fix it when we don't all understand it. Sometimes we gift from afar or as in donations or in prayer or just in listening and learning. And so paying it forward, as some people have heard, and sometimes that happens when you go through the line in a drive through somebody pays yours and then you pay the person behind you, and, and we've heard that, or group funding and crowdfunding. There are many creative ways people find to give. And we had a personal experience of that. We were invited out for dinner, Walter and I, uh, earlier this week, following a funeral, as you may or may not have known, we had three funerals in our community this past week. And so we were invited for dinner, and it was a lovely time. There were about, you know, some cousins and siblings that were about 10 or 12 people. And then when it came time to pay, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't asked to pay, but when, when we were all wrapped up, the host of the evening came to us and said, guess what? And there was a woman who was eating in the restaurant and saw this group and went to the, to the manager and said, I would like to pick up their tab and paid the whole bill for about 12 people. And we were like all stunned and but, 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 and the manager said, this person does not want to be known. This happens, this happens to be a person who's a regular customer here and where her generosity comes from is her husband died a number of years ago and when everything was settled, she was amazed at how he had provided for her. And so one of the things she likes to do, she likes to go out for dinner with sometimes a niece or a friend, and she just sits and watches the people in the restaurant, and then out of the blue will decide. Sometimes it's a young couple maybe on their first date. Sometimes it's a family who maybe, you know, have struggles with bills. She doesn't know. She doesn't ask. She just looks around the room and then goes to the manager and pays quietly pays the bill and walks away, and she does it all cash, and he doesn't even know her name. So, wow, what do you do in the face of such generosity? And woven through our scripture, Jesus is trying to say the same thing. The lilies of the field and the birds, and God takes care of them. I mean, I, I get that, Jesus, but I mean, I can't live on bird seed, and I do need something to put around my body. People would be freaked out if I walked around with nothing on, and it would get very cold in winter. But metaphorically, Jesus is saying, look, work together, take care of each other, look out for each other, and all of these little details will work themselves out. If you begin with a demeanor of openness and thankfulness and saying, what can we do with what we have? Life is so much easier and so much richer than continually looking around and seeing what others have and complaining that you don't. And so thanksgiving and giving thanks is this interacting relationship that we have with our creator, that we have with one another, that we have with ourselves. How can you pay it forward? How can you give thanks by sharing? I have actually was thinking this year and reflecting about the text. Maybe rather than calling it thanksgiving, we should call it share giving. Because we have abundance at our tables all year round, most of us. We don't live in communities or lives that are re re dependent on the weather or on, on circumstance. And so maybe this time of year can not only, not only be thanksgiving, but share giving. How can I share? of all that I have. For what am I thankful? Freedom, opportunity, community. Uh, what can I give? And it doesn't even have to be material things. It can simply be time or, or sitting with someone or calling someone up. There are so many places where we can be of help to others. 
And so as Jesus says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? In our German service, we so often that we sing a hymn called Danke für diesen guten Morgen. Thank you for this beautiful morning. And there is an English translation. It's not as good in my humble opinion. And we like to sing that around Thanksgiving. It's got a very lilting tune. It was written in the early 80s and it became uh, a Christian pop tune at the time. Apparently thousands upon thousands of people bought recordings of this because it has a very lilting tune, which I will not sing. I will spare you that on this lovely morning. But it says, you know, thank you for this good morning. Thank you for every new day. Thank you that I can give all my sorrows to you. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for everyone. Thank you that I can even forgive my enemies. Thank you for my work. Thank you for every little opportunity. Thank you for what's beautiful, what is light, and thank you for music. Part of it's written, of course, to rhyme. Thank you for sadness. Thank you for every good word. And there's new verses continually being written. And the conclusion that I really like is it says, thank you for all of this and thank you that I can give thanks. And so on this Thanksgiving Sunday, this week of Thanksgiving, and you're giving a week because we start the week and the other group finishes it. But on this Thanksgiving share giving week, Look around you. And sure, there are struggles and there are hardships and there are worries and there are inconsistencies and our governments do crazy things sometimes and there's meanness and horribleness out there. But we don't have to be that way. We can be the light in the midst of all of that. We can be those who live in thanksgiving. We can be those who live in share giving. So be thankful and be joyous. Amen.